Hey everyone, we'll just give it a couple of minutes to let everyone join in and then we'll get started. All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, we're very excited to have you on. Uh, my name is Timothy Tran and I'm a field marketer in APAC here at GitLab. Uh, today's webinar will cover why organizations are adopting value stream DevOps platforms. And it will be led by Jonathan Lim, who's our senior technical account manager here at GitLab. Uh, just a little housekeeping before we get started. This webinar is being recorded the presentations and slides will be emailed to you after the webinar is finished. If you've got any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box below um, on your Zoom control. I'll compile them during the presentation and we'll give some time for Jonathan at the end to answer your questions. We'll also have a couple of polling questions through the session uh, that will pop up on your screen and all you need to do is pick an answer that is most applicable to you. So without further ado, let me introduce to you today, Jonathan Lim. Uh, Jonathan is a technical account manager here at GitLab and he's based out of Singapore. Having seen how security vulnerabilities or code quality issues in production environments have caused companies to suffer, Jonathan joined GitLab to learn if we could remediate these problems earlier in the software development cycle. Jonathan, take it away. Um, Tim, can you hear me all right? Okay, all right, just checking. Um, hi everyone, yeah, my name is Jonathan. Uh, so just gonna start out with a few polling questions, kind of get an idea about like uh, how everyone is and you know, uh, how familiar you are with GitLab. So just for the first question is, uh, are you currently using GitLab? So you might get in. Okay. All right. So I think we got most of the answers already. So, all right. Um, yeah. So looks like a lot of people are not using GitLab at this point. Um, majority of them. So, okay. I'll, I'll probably explain it in a way that it's a, a bit uh, more from like a, like a first time user kind of a way. Um, and that was helpful. So for the next one, uh, as the topic suggests, today we're going to be talking about like value stream management. Um, so uh, if, uh, if you're using value stream management, which ones are you using? Or if not, I think there's an option that um, uh, for the last options that I don't know what it is. So Okay, good. Um, looks like uh, we have a, right. So it looks like a lot of people are not, they don't know what value stream management is. So I think that would be a good way because today it's gonna to be a bit more of an introductory uh, session about like what value stream management is about and how do we uh, use it. It's uh, also quite, understandable since value stream management was, it's a new, pretty much a new segment within the uh, tech stack and uh, companies are now kind of like jumping along onto it. All right, so going on to the presentation, uh, I will generally like to use kind of like a, an idea of like, how do I explain value stream management? So if you see on the left here, you might uh, take a scenario where you bought a apartment and it's quite dilapidated or it's, uh, you, you know, everything's broken down and then you go and then you have an idea about what you need to do. 
uh, or how do you want to kind of like uh, renovate your place to look like something that looks like that after a while, right? So that's the kind of end goal in sense, in the sense of it. So how do you get from one end to the other end? Uh, and I think it's very difficult, especially for some of you who might have your own apartment or your own place that you 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 had, and you had to kind of um, uh, how, how do you say you had you had to kind of like. Uh, uh, organize a lot of the things you had to bring in uh, multiple stakeholders such as maybe your plumber your electrician your your carpenter and maybe some of your workers who might be helping you with like construction and stuff um, and that came about the rise of like interior designers or at least interior designers in Singapore if you are from Singapore right so uh, the interior designers basically it's a single source of truth where they help you to actually uh, collect like collect all the information, help you to put it into a single data data uh, like a single data platform where you get to see all your problems. They help you to organize all of these things, give you that visibility overall, and help you to kind of like make things a little bit easier. So I guess in a way um, that's what value stream management platforms are. So by Gartner's definition, value stream delivery platforms help organizations simplify and manage somewhat like a, uh, like a, like a designer as well. So the idea behind it is to provide that traceability, visibility, observability into your entire workflow. Uh, specifically, in this case, what we are talking about is your software delivery lifecycle. So as part of the DevOps report that uh, Gartner has, um, these are kind of like the main three uh, problems that we actually see. So first and foremost, multiple point solution. So as you know um, how, because DevOps kind of like came about due to like a, a sort of like the agile movement towards like uh, software de uh, delivery, a lot of different companies are actually doing like uh, small different components. So you have a, a company that does like a uh, source code management very well, another company that does uh, CI very well, another company that does security very well. Uh, what happens in this case is that because of that, there's kind of the increased complexity because you have so many uh, solutions out there and all of these solutions have their integration points which may break when you kind of uh, uh, have to upgrade or you have to kind of fix a lot of these things. There's also the management issue of it. How do you manage it? There's uh, the idea of like having to manage all your logins. So for example, integrations with your LDAP or your Kerberos or your like single sign-on and all that. Uh, second point, struggle to reduce uh, mean time to repair or MTTR in this case. There's a lack of visibility across the board because you have so many tools, right? So you're not really sure for your developer, where are they getting stuck at? Is it from issue management or is it they're getting stuck in their development process? Or is it that their CI pipelines are running slow? Um, and what are the constraints, right? So are they not able to scale horizontally uh, well enough when they have like not enough uh, compute power? Or is it the problem where, uh, you know, they have problems with like um, uh, fixing their, uh, uh, storing their artifacts in a way, or they have problems with their delivery in terms of like um, multiple, multiple cloud vendors and so on and so forth. Last but not least, scalability and security, uh, especially in this time and challenge of like remote working, this is this uh, has become a bit of a problem because a lot of people are using VPN. A lot of people have to. Um, security has become a very major concern because data is being transferred over the internet, um, and this and security becomes a, a big part of it. There's the infra and operation cost towards it. How do we manage it in a way that it makes sense? especially for multi uh, like geographical organizations that span across uh, multiple countries. How do we manage that in a secure way? So Gartner gave us some idea about what is required. And these are like kind of like the key highlights or key milestones that I think um, would then set a software del delivery uh, platform that uh, supports um, VSM or uh, in, in a well, in a good way. So during the plan and create components of it, when you're uh, dealing with your issues, when you're actually creating your code by actually committing your code, uh, integrate and verify where you have all your code bases, um, verification, whether is it like your code uh, quality or having your security scans, your deploy and operate and your monitor and proof. These are all of the things that are very important for uh, you to manage your software develop, uh, development lifecycle properly. Uh, on top of that, 
it has to have like the security and compliance as was mentioned earlier on, um, allow teams to collaborate properly, having APIs for extensibility so that, you know, if you need to actually export a lot of these things to, a, to a external um, VSM tool or even your internal VSM tool that might make things easier and then governance and access uh, towards it, All right? So GitLab has, uh, has kind of like taken uh, some tips or like some feedback from this thing. And we came up with something that is similar in that sense. So across the 10 stages of our development lifecycle from manage all the way to defend across the multiple teams, such as product management, developers, quality assurance, security operations and infrastructure, uh, we want to make things easy for you, right? So in the sense of having a single data storage, so everything is stored on a single platform a uh, single permission model. So you don't have to have multiple tools and trying to integrate all that um, LDAP and all, and all. The governance and security because of that single interface and that collaboration, right? So I think today we're not gonna be, it's not a sales pitch. This is more like uh, um, trying to get you to understand like what, um, how, uh, what the industry is trying to do and how GitLab uh, as a company is trying to align uh, to, to some of these, uh, um, these values, right? Um, another thing that we do have is uh, platforms. So GitLab has invested a lot of effort into our in analytics and insights tools. Um, so right now, uh, as we speak, we have approximately over 20 different types of uh, dashboards available on the tool itself to actually um, give you some insight into uh, different components, such as like your executive insights, which we will be talking a little bit more about later. Um, and including for more um, granular breakdowns in terms of like productivity insights, developer insights, operations and security insights. So I will now go into details. There are quite a lot of um, resources available online um, into talking about each and every type of dashboard available. Um, but um, today I just want to focus a little bit about the executive insights because uh, we are kind of talking about value stream. Right. So in GitLab, we have a dashboard called Value Stream Analytics. And what it is, is that it helps you to basically identify some of the bottlenecks in the development process. So as we mentioned, there are the multiple stages available uh, as part of the entire uh, uh, software development. Uh, one of the things that, uh, so, so we start from issue and then we go to plan and then we go to code, test, review, staging, uh, so on and so forth. So this is kind of like a high level default um, stage across a software development lifecycle. But we do realize the idea that maybe different teams and different organizations actually manage uh, your software development differently, or you might have more granular tasks. That's where we have the ability as of, I think 13.6 or 13.5, um, a couple of versions ago, um, that we have the ability to add new stages, right? So adding new stages allows you to define the uh, different uh, stages in your software development lifecycle as needed be, um, allowing you to actually um, have more control into how you want to actually manage, uh, 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 monitor some of these stages. So VSM or values, uh, value stream analytics in that sense is basically a time to value. So how do we define time to value? That's entirely up to you. But how I think a lot of the industry people um, kind of define it is from the moment of ideation. So when you come up with an idea, so for example, if you come up with a feature within your, uh, for your project to the point where it's actually deployed into production or in a UAT environment. So that's entirely up to you, right? So that's kind of like the idea behind time to value. Uh, uh, and, and how your organization defines it is how you might want to actually um, do these things. Um, there are a couple of things in the back end that we will talk about and I will actually show you in sort of like a demo or like looking through some of the dashboards that we have. Uh, but but there are some of the key uh, things that you need to enable within GitLab if you were to choose to use these features. Uh, next thing is roadmaps. So what roadmaps are, it's like it's a kind of a timeline for epics. So epics, if you are familiar with the GitLab terminology or if you are using a uh, some other Kanban board uh, technologies out there, such as maybe your Jira. Um, you uh, get, uh, Epics are basically a collection of issues or problems or workflows that you might want to track at a high level overview and then helping you to answer a bigger question. So maybe one of the things like a typical Epic would sound like would be, uh, 
uh, trying to improve my front end web performance by 20%, right? So that's a high level epic. And within that high level epic, you might have a uh, more granular tasks such as uh, changing my front end web server to Nginx or um, like changing a framework uh, to a certain different framework, right? So these are like kind of like more granular tasks that answers a bigger question. So this is kind of like a way of how you actually um, time your value. And because of the ability to kind of see it from a timeline perspective for each of them, um, this is how uh, this, this would actually um, help you to actually vet, get your value a little bit faster or help you to measure your value a bit faster. Coupled with the idea of milestones, um, where in GitLab, how we actually use it today is having uh, very specific milestones such as like uh, releases. So every month on the 22nd, we have a release. So we have a milestone release every single month and how does this epic uh, actually coincide with a lot of these releases is something that we are always trying to uh, figure out. Right, so these are all some of the things that we do have currently in GitLab. Um, but at the same time, we are always looking out. And again, like I mentioned earlier, we are not, today we're not just going to be talking about GitLab, but kind of like that, uh, what is the industry kind of looking at? So what is next? Uh, so over the past few years, uh, founded in 2015, a group of people or like a, a, a kind of a group of companies came together to come up with this uh, assessment called the DevOps Research Analysis or what is known as DORA. Uh, in 2018, Google then acquired this group of people um, or like the, the, or kind of like uh, is managing this group of people. Um, and the basics, the basis behind it is that um, they want to kind of come up with a standard or <clears throat> some of the best practices that comes with it um, when it comes to um, assessing your DevOps um, health within your organization. So um, across the years, Dora has came up with these four metrics that they believe are very good metrics to actually measure how well your organization is actually uh, uh, you know, doing your DevOps in that sense. So first and foremost, deployment frequency. Um, second, lead time for changes. Uh, third, time to restore service. And fourth, change failure rate. So I understand that this slide has too many words and I personally don't like having too many words, um, but I, I just want to put it there so that, say for example, when you bring it back to your organization, you can kind of use this um, ma matrix to actually see whether how, how far along um, your DevOps journey you are. Um, but part of this DevOps, um, this Dora uh, uh, research, uh, which is approximately like 80 pages, I kind of read through a few pages of it, is that what they found was that high performers tend to have these four uh, kind of uh, characteristics, right? So first and foremost, they deploy um, multiple times more. So um, some examples are like um, uh, companies like Amazon, companies like Google, they actually deploy like up to maybe 200 time, eight times more. Um, I think I read an article somewhere where they said like Amazon basically comes up with a new uh, version of their website um, every 10 minutes or so, and they deploy it very, very frequently. Um, they have faster lead times to commit. From, so from committing of your code to actually deploying it, it's a lot faster in organizations that adopted DevOps well. Uh, time to recover from incidents. So from the point of creating an incident to recovering from it, whether it's an availability issue or is it a bug or a security issue, they are a lot faster because of the way that they deploy and they fix issue. Um, they are also seven times lower in terms of change failure rate. So change failure rate in the way of like when they deploy code, how does it actually translate to you know, a CI job failing or not being able to deploy to production properly? Uh, organizations generally um, that perform better are able to actually hit these four matrix. Um, and a, another article that I actually kind of picked up on was actually a company in the US called Capital One. So Capital One actually believes in this uh, concept really strongly. And even though Capital One is one of the biggest, one of the really big companies, I think it's a Fox 500 company, um, they really consider themselves a startup and they actually deploy code really frequently on a day-to-day -day basis. So I, I have all the links available. You can kind of take a look and read the articles accordingly. 
So these are just kind of like overarching uh, strategies or in a way um, what uh, Google and Dora kind of came about together to come up with this metric or rubric for you to actually measure your, your DevOps uh, lifecycle. But how do you actually measure these metrics in, you know, uh, in, in your environment? So Google came up with a project and this was called, this is called the four keys project. Um, so you can actually go to uh, the source here and you can actually take a look at uh, the source code for all of these things. It's more like a documentation available. So how do you actually measure some of these things like lead time to change, change failure rate, um, deployment frequency and time to restore service. So first and foremost, this project is uh, supports GitLab events and GitHub events if you're a GitHub user. Uh, basically pulls in all of these things by the extensible API that I was talking about earlier um, and able to chart all of these things across time um, for the long term. Uh, the, just a caveat for you to know is that when you uh, deploy this project, the idea behind it is that you do have to install a couple of things, as I mentioned at the corner here. There's the requirements of having the technology stack of using Data Studio, PubSat, uh, BigQuery, and a bit of like a, um, for you to kind of like massage your data, you kind of need to write a bit of uh, Python code available. All of these things are available on the, the project. You can kind of see that in, over here. Um, and this basically only runs on Google um, because it's, uh, I mean, it's led by Google, right? So if you want to, if you're using on AWS or you're using in a different environment, you might have to translate them accordingly. Uh, so GitLab has kind of taken a leaf out of that and um, tried to do something similar. And we are trying to you know, adopt some of the industry best practices. And what we have came out so far is really just one out of all of it. So it's something that we across the year, I mean, this calendar year within 2021, we are trying to achieve all four different uh, metrics available. Um, but what we have available right now is actually, um, we have achieved um, one of the metrics, which is deployment frequency. So from a project level, um, we are able to actually see across the time frame how often you are deploying. Um, and from a group level, how many deployments are there happening? So uh, because I, earlier I, I, I did see like not a lot of people are using GitLab currently. So the difference between projects and groups is that it's just kind of a logical um, grouping of uh, different projects. So you might have a uh, project that's written, uh, written in uh, uh, Ruby and another project that's written in like Java, but because of like that uh, multi-architectural thing, they might be interacting with each other. So that gave rise to the idea of like projects and groups and how you group them together uh, instead of the other alternative like mono repos. Yeah, so uh, there's the link over here. So if you can see that, I put it at the bottom because I know if this is going to be sent out as a PDF, you might not be able to access it. Um, but you can track the progress or how GitLab is trying to achieve some of these things. I think we should have most of it, if not all of it for like a first version uh, within this year. And then we will um, definitely try and improve on uh, having more customizability such, uh, such as our, our value stream management analytics kind of uh, uh, dashboard uh, across the next year or so. Another thing is that for lead time to change, I think one of a uh, kind of a way to measure this is also uh, for in the group and projects insights. So over here, you can have actual dashboards available where you can see like your, um, how, how many issues are there per month and how many issues are you actually resolving uh, across the board. Uh, these are all customizable. There is like an XML in the back end where you can actually customize and choose and create your own um, dashboards available. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit later on how that looks like. All right, so that is pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to kind of like put it out there. It's like, it, it's more like a high level. Uh, and this is what GitLab is trying to align ourselves with in terms of like what industry is uh, looking at. But I just wanna show you maybe a little bit on like how it looks like in GitLab and give you a flavor so you can appreciate it a little bit more on that front. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, let me look at value stream. Um, so from a value stream standpoint, um, this is from a uh, from gitlab.org. So this is our actual platform uh, and our website. Um, so over here, you get to see like from an issue to plan, uh, to code, to test and review. These are all the different stages and what the tasks are underneath a lot of these things. 
uh, we break down a little bit more as well as to show you like within each of these type of tasks, what are they uh, at this, what are they doing at this point? So with the labels that you we have in our organization, like accepting merge requests, um, whether these are just basically documentation, quality checks. Let me just zoom in a bit because it might be a bit small. Um, quality checks, um, or you're doing certain triage reports, so and so forth. All of these things are labeled and in a way to help you see whether you're getting your value um, quick enough. Uh, one of the ways you can read this is also like, oh, are we, um, are we, are we like um, clearing a lot of more tasks um, each month also or each day? So this kind of helps you to uh, get a proxy in terms of like measuring the productivity of your team as well. Uh, so the other thing that I have, uh, which I mentioned earlier just now, is also your roadmaps. So roadmaps uh, can be found under epics in, term, in the roadmap column. Uh, and what you can see here is that I, 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 I did put a few filters. I think the filters are really useful because uh, right now I'm using gitlab.org, which has thousands of epics, which um, would probably crash my browser. So having proper labels and checking certain things uh, would help you to actually see some of your epics or track your progress of a certain task across time a bit better. So uh, over here, you can see that the label that I'm looking at is advanced. So personally, I've been helping out with the product, uh, with the product team or like the developers um, in terms of like the Elasticsearch integrations with GitLab at the backend. And these are basically some of the things or tasks that we have been working on across time. So over here, you can see how we've broken it down, like um, some of the tasks that we have, like for example, search ranking, uh, uh, so on and so forth, and how uh, we have progressed about it. So over here, you can see like over here, we have 50% of it done um, out of two tasks underneath. And they have, uh, you can actually rank um, some of these tasks as, uh, at level of importance. And this helps you to kind of track in terms of time, how uh, are, are your tasks progressing across time. Uh, at the same time, over here at the top, you can actually see these lines and these lines actually um, coincide with milestones. So for GitLab, we see it as like, uh, we coincide with a product release milestone. So every time we have a product release, what are the um, epics or what are the issues that we have fixed? If we have fixed them, we then put, push it into release um, by that uh, uh, milestone release at the same time, right? So in line with that, you can kind of click into it as well. So for example, if I were to look at something that was, we are in 13.10 right now, it was just released yesterday, if I'm not wrong or two days ago, you can kind of see a little bit more into what this looks like. Um, and especially for teams that are uh, more involved in the idea of like your, your burn down charts or um, trying to measure, uh, especially from an agile methodology, you can kind of see like how many tasks are being completed compared to the tasks that are being raised at the same time, right? So again, a proxy for how you can see your productivity of your team uh, and how you, uh, in a way, um, get to value a little bit quicker. Um, some of the dashboards available here, um, I don't have actual data because I only have a test environment here, um, but some of the amount of deployment. So this is in line with uh, like your DORA form metrics that you can actually see. Uh, insights over here, as I mentioned, uh, kind of a proxy on how fast or how many issues you are fixing a month. So over here, you can see like uh, each box that are created per month by priority. So you can rank them accordingly and by severity. Uh, you can have multiple different ones as well. And these are all customized, customizable via the XML um, tool that you can have in the backend of uh, GitLab. And you can have all of these reporting dashboards to um, teams that uh, need to know. Um, right, so at the back end, you can also have a lot of these things such as, for example, I am only looking at uh, um, availability, availability issues. So having the ability to actually customize on this dashboard with the appropriate filters, um, that, that's really useful from what we've been hearing from a lot of our customers. So yeah, uh, something like releases, again, with the Dora form metrics, we can see the releases over time with the project uh, how many percent of them are actually releasing. Um, again, this is very, very initial. We are going to flash it out with a lot more um, features available. Um, but um, this is what we have now in terms of like uh, uh, supporting some of the Dora 4 metrics as well. Right. 
So I think with that, it kind of is everything I needed to show today. Um, it is really um, kind of a very high level uh, overview um, at the beginning right now. Uh, the next few webinars that we're going to have, it's going to be a little bit more uh, in depth into specific topics such as uh, like uh, into different stages such as your create stage or in your CI stage or your security stage. Um, but this is kind of the first webinar for the year if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Um, and then we will go from there. So thanks everyone. Awesome. Thanks for that, Jonathan. Thanks for the very insightful presentation. Um, we don't have any questions that came through the Q and A. Um, so I know everyone's time is quite precious. So we'll probably end it there. Um, once again, thank you to everyone for tuning in today. Hope you found it very valuable. Um, a reminder that the presentation will be shared with you via email in the coming days. Um, they'll give you access to all the different information that John had provided. Um, so yeah, so we have lots of virtual events coming up in the next couple of months. Um, things like workshops and our flagship APAC GitLab Connect event, where we'll bring together a range of speakers to share their knowledge on all things DevOps. So keep an eye out on um, an e email information uh, invitation for that. Again, thank you, everyone. Uh, see you next time. Thanks, everyone. I uh, just had a question from Samuel come through mentioning events. Uh, yes, we'll shoot through an email to you, Samuel, um, for any any upcoming events. And we also have a events calendar. Um, I will share with you the link to that now. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. See you next time.